to give that one-on-one -on -one personal assistance to families. I believe that it is incredibly important that during this time where people are going through so much, where they're upset, they're going through all kinds of emotions, that they have someone that they can talk to and can get the assistance that they need. We have 38 staff here. I flew in an extra 16 staff today to ensure that we had the extra capacity. And as you can see, we've got the Salvation Army here helping. We've got Orange Sky Laundry here giving a hand for people. We have so many staff here and a big thank you to uh, Brigadier Chris Field, who've got all of the support out in the fields helping people, but also to uh, Commissioner and um, Mick, all of your staff, housing and police. This is going to take uh, time to recover, but we're seeing that true community spirit alive in every community across our state that's been impacted. And a big shout out, a big thank you to the Cowboys who've come today, who've uh, signed autographs, they've spent about two or three hours, but really played an important role in lifting the spirits of the children in this community. So there's a long way to go with the recovery, but we have the staff uh, sent out to the regions to help people on their path to recovery. I just want to reassure everybody, I've, I've got ministers out and across the state at the moment. Cyclone Debbie had a huge impact, especially up here in the north, Bowen, Airlie Beach, the smaller communities as well. And I really want to thank the Australian Defence Force because they have really gone into those communities early on to reassure residents. But we've had such widespread devastation from Cyclone Debbie and the low pressure right across our state, it is going to take time to recover. We know here, especially with uh, Ellie Beach and with uh, Shoot Harbour and Proserpine and those coastal communities, that they only have about 96%, there's 96% of power still not restored. So that's gonna take time, but we've got the amazing personnel from Ergon, they're right across the streets here, um, making sure that we can restore power as quickly as possible and the Australian Defence Forces ensuring that we've got those uh, generators and also to the necessary personnel, the engineers on the ground. But did you feel it uh, um, necessary to reassure people here that they haven't been? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And, I, and I believe it's, it's important uh, to, as Premier of this state, to reassure uh, all of the communities that have been impacted that, that my government is here, that we are here with you, that... Yes, it is going to take time to rebuild, but we have an incredibly resilient Queensland and I see that everywhere I go. And what I saw today is local people coming out and helping locals. I've seen people offering beds to other people who don't have anywhere to go. I was talking to Ray White and they've got some 700 homes that have been impacted by the cyclone. Some people are going to have to move out and find alternative accommodation. Uh, the the depth of the impact is very much widespread and we've got roads out, we've got bridges out. It's 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 right across the state and it is going to take time. Any update on Rocky? Uh, as we know, uh, Rocky is also, Rockhampton is also preparing uh, for those flood levels uh, of up to nine metres. Uh, the, the, uh, the community is very well prepared and I've had some people on the ground uh, speaking with my local member and minister, Bill Burns there, and also the mayor, they are very confident that the necessary uh, preparations have been done. Some 1,800 people have been personally contacted. So they've had the time to prepare. Uh, goods are being uh, lifted and personal belongings up to higher grounds. And, and we just want to make sure once again that everyone's safe. But I might let the commissioner also tell people once again about with these rising floodwaters, we don't want people in them. We don't want kids playing around. We need people to be safe. So I'll hand over to you, Commissioner. Look, thank you, Premier. Um, I can tell you that the uh, the height in uh, Rockhampton right at this time has just gone past 7.8 metres uh, on its way to 8. And uh, obviously the predictions, as the, uh, the bomb told us, are, are following that course. It's very, very important, both here in places that are in full recovery, uh, like Airlie Beach and the surrounding areas and on the islands, uh, we don't want any tragedies. People just need to be patient on the roads. 
They need to uh, look after their neighbours, make sure that they're OK, uh, make sure that people are getting enough to drink. Um, that's a very, very important point. We don't want to see anyone hurt in the recovery phase. And it's getting very busy here, as the Premier said. You've only got to look around this centre to see the amount of activity that's now going on and, and again, uh, being led by uh, Brigadier Chris Fields in that recovery phase. But Rockhampton, absolutely, we cannot be complacent. We can't have people allowing kids anywhere near the water. We, we've just got to be patient and watch that water rise uh, and help all of the community down there to weather the, uh, the devastation that's coming their way. And I might just get Brigadier Chris Field to talk about the Australian Defence Force role. Oh, the Australian Defence Force continues with approximately 1,500 people from the Navy, Army and Air Force supporting the, the local government and state efforts in Rockhampton and also, sorry, in uh, with Sundays and also the Mackay districts. We have people on the ground uh, supporting with the State Emergency Service and Emergency Services uh, looking, after, looking after community facilities and making sure that recovery can, can uh, go into practice in the with Sundays here. The Mayor has declared that with Sundays is moving into recovery and we're standing beside that regional council making sure we give them the support they need. Uh, so the, the, the key is that we, we make sure that the communities can re retain and maintain their, their normal patterns of life. It is about making sure that areas are clear and safe. The particular partnership with Ergon to make sure that the Ergon workers can get to where they need to do and get the power on is a priority focus for us. We're also able to provide fresh drinking water for people and I know that under Lieutenant Colonel Jennifer Harris, she's doing a great job. The HMAS Chules is postured to support in the vicinity of uh, Rockhampton if she's needed and uh, we, we'll, we'll, look for, we'll look towards where the state and local government agencies need our support in the future and we're ready for the challenge. Oh, so the, 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 main, the main requirement for us is to make sure we support local and state government authorities in their, continu in their continuing work. Our, our people support the great skills of the state emergency services and the local councils. Here in the Whit Sundays, the local councils are now getting, ab getting about to their business of making the, the Shire and making the regional council work again. And we're very pleased to work in support of that effort. And Mick, housing? So we've got uh, thousands of Queenslanders uh, right across the state from here in the Whitsundays right down to the New South Wales-Queensland border that are doing it tough because their homes have been inundated with water or damaged by uh, powerful winds during uh, Cyclone Debbie. We've got dedicated staff uh, here at this recovery centre but at a number of others that are helping people find appropriate alternative accommodation. And uh, it's just so important that first and foremost we make sure that those people are safe uh, I want to assure everybody uh, who's uh, in Rockhampton uh, that is in the flood affected area uh, to make contact with their local recovery centre. We'll be able to help you find emergency accommodation if you need it over the next few days. It's just so vital uh, that we take early steps to keep uh, every Queenslander safe. Uh, I want to thank the, uh, the staff of all of the agencies that are pulling together here, uh, showing great leadership in supporting Queenslanders uh, in their time of need. Uh, we're providing emergency accommodation, we're providing emergency funds uh, and of course uh, we're working to make sure that uh, economies and communities uh, like the Whit Sundays get back on their feet as quickly as possible. So finding a roof over everybody's head here in the Whit Sundays is a particularly difficult challenge. That's why we've got staff here on the ground at the moment. We're providing emergency accommodation in places like Townsville and Mackay. Uh, we're providing a, a range of solutions. Uh, we've urged people to uh, rely on friends and family first and foremost, but uh, here with the uh, extent of devastation uh, in the Whit Sundays, that's quite difficult. So uh, we're working to find a range of solutions. We're offering uh, rental grants and bond loans to assist people into accommodation in other places. It's certainly a significant challenge, but uh, I know that uh, uh, the Premier has uh, uh, all of her ministers working to deliver a, a quick recovery uh, to get people back on their feet as quickly as possible. Yeah, sure.
Well, look, my focus is purely on the recovery and those are questions that need to be asked to One Nation and to Tim Nichols. Um, obviously, some startling revelations um, about deals and preferences and everything, but honestly, they can focus on that. I'm purely focused on the people here and getting them on the road to recovery. And, and if I can just add this, as I, as I move around this region, speaking to people one-on-one, -on -one, hearing their personal stories, what they've been going through, but also seeing mates helping mates, neighbours helping neighbours, and families helping families, I'll tell you one thing, it makes you incredibly proud to be a Queenslander. Tim Nichols says those stories about deals with One Nation are rubbish. Do you believe him? Uh, that's a matter for him, but obviously there are voice recordings that state otherwise. Okay, thanks everyone. Now, it's Queensland Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk speaking from Mallee Beach uh, in northern Queensland about the recovery effort in the wake of Cyclone Debbie.